In this mini lecture, we'll learn about some of the other reactions of aromatic compounds other than the electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction, which we learned about in the previous mini lecture. In the previous mini lecture, we learned how hydrogens on an airing ring could be replaced, substituted, with electrophiles. This is the electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. In today's mini lecture, we're going to see how the airing ring itself can undergo chemical reactions, how substituents like halogens and methyl groups can undergo reactions, and then finally, how the nitro group can be reduced to the NH2 group. All three of these, the chloro, methyl, and nitro, are referred to as peripheral substituents and they can be modified or substituted in the case of chlorine uh, using the chemistry in this mini lecture. Now the arene ring is quite resistant to hydrogenation. Alkenes are reduced quite readily by hydrogen in the presence of palladium catalysts. In the case of an arene ring, however, there's no reaction whatsoever. In order to get the arene ring to be reduced, we must react with a specialized catalyst which is rhodium metal dispersed on a carbon substrate. With this particular catalyst, we can add hydrogen across the carbon-carbon double bonds of our arene ring and convert our arene ring into a cyclohexane ring. So in general, the simple hydrogenation conditions that we learned about for alkenes and alkynes will not reduce the arene ring. Let's look now at some of the sites outside of the ring itself, the peripheral substituents. One of the best groups to undergo chemical reaction is the nitro group. The NO2 group is a highly oxidized form of nitrogen, and it's possible to replace the oxygens and to reduce the nitrogen by placing the nitro group under reducing conditions. There are two sets of conditions that can accomplish this goal. One set of conditions involve using hydrogen and palladium on carbon. Under these conditions, the hydrogen molecules bind to the surface of the palladium, and on the surface of the palladium, those hydrogen atoms react with the nitro group, generating water molecules and reducing the nitro group to an NH2 group. So this is an excellent way to generate anilines from the corresponding nitroarenes. In the previous mini lecture we learned how you can put a nitro group onto an arene ring quite easily by reacting the arene ring with sulfuric acid and nitric acid. And so we can over a two-step sequence then place a amino group onto an arene ring. We'll learn later on that we can replace the amino group with a variety of nucleophiles using reaction chemistry called diazonium salts. And so overall, this is an excellent way to put a variety of nucleophiles on a ring in place of a hydrogen atom. Now, if you had other reducible groups in your molecule, ones that would react with hydrogen and palladium on carbon, you can use an alternative set of reducing conditions, and that involves the use of tin dichloride and acid. Tin dichloride is tin 2 plus, and that's a reduced form of tin. The highest oxidation state of tin is tin 4 plus, and so the element of tin 2 plus can provide a pair of electrons. HCl can provide a pair of protons, and so overall we can reduce the nitro group to the amino group. Along the way, however, our nitrogen gets converted into its conjugate acid. Because we're under acidic conditions, that nitrogen gets protonated, and so in a second step we must react this conjugate acid of our aniline with a base, sodium hydroxide. So we first form our conjugate acid of aniline. <clears throat> this is referred to as an anilinium ion. So two different pathways to accomplish the same goal, reduction of the nitro group to an amino group. 
Under the same conditions for reduction of a nitro group, we can reduce a wide variety of oxygen-containing groups that are attached to an air in ring. If we have an air real ketone, where we have a carbon-oxygen double bond attached to the aerine ring, directly attached to the aerine ring, then we can hydrogenate the carbon-oxygen double bond into a CH2 group. Along the way, the carbonyl group gets reduced to the corresponding alcohol group, which then in turn gets reduced to the CH2 group. So in the same way, benzyl alcohols, which is what this is, can get reduced under the same conditions. And in addition, benzylic ethers, where we have a benzene ring attached to a CH2 group, attached to an oxygen carbon, a benzyl ether, can get reduced as well. And so in this case, we cleave the oxygen carbon bond and re we reduce the carbon atom from a CH2O group to a CH3 group. And so we learn in more advanced uh, topics of organic chemistry that the benzyl group is an excellent protecting group for alcohols, that we can actually cleave that oxygen-carbon bond and generate our alcohol plus our a molecule of toluene. Well, in addition to the hydrogenation conditions shown here, we can use an alternative set of conditions that will reduce the carbonyl group to a CH2 group. And this involves using zinc amalgam, zinc mixed with mercury. Anything, any metal mixed with mercury is referred to as an amalgam. Any metal that reacts with mercury forms a material referred to as an amalgam. Uh, was used in dentistry to create fillings, and those fillings obviously contained mercury. So with zinc amalgam, zinc mercury, and acid, we can reduce the carbonyl group to a CH2 group. If we have an alkyl group, In the previous mini-lecture, we learned how we can make these aerial ketones quite readily using what's called the friedels craft acylation reaction. So take an aerine ring with a hydrogen on it and react it with an acid chloride, R carbonyl Cl, in the presence of aluminum trichloride. These conditions allow you to replace a hydrogen with our acyl group, leading to an aerial ketone. So overall, this sequence of reactions allow us to replace a hydrogen on an aerine ring with a CH2R group. And overall, this is a much better way, in many cases, to put an alkyl group onto an aerine ring. If you remember, the alternative way to put alkyl groups onto an aerine ring is to use the friedels craft alkylation reaction. And the friedels craft alkylation reaction typically leads to more than one alkyl group going onto the ring because the alkyl benzene becomes a better nucleophile than the aerine ring that we started with. In this sequence of reactions, replacing the hydrogen with our acyl group leads to a deactivated ring which will not undergo a second reaction to put on another acyl group. And as a result, we can stop with one of these groups going on the aerine ring and then reduce it to the CH2R group. Let's look now at how we can take a alkyl substituted benzene and oxidize it to a benzoic acid. And overall, this allows us to be able to introduce the carboxylic acid group onto an aryan ring. If we have an alkyl benzene, which could be formed from an aryan through either the friedels craft alkylation reaction or the friedels craft acylation reaction followed by the hydrogenation reaction that we just learned about, 
then we can get a alkyl group on our benzene ring. And as long as that alkyl group has a benzylic hydrogen, that alkyl group can be completely cleaved to generate a carboxylic acid. As long as we've got this benzylic hydrogen, it doesn't matter whether the 2R groups are alkyl groups or hydrogens themselves, we can oxidize the carbon atom, cleave off these R groups, and generate a carboxylic acid. And the conditions for this reaction are simply using aqueous permanganate under acidic conditions. So overall, this is an excellent way to replace a hydrogen with a carboxylic acid group. Now this is a reaction that we've seen before. Replacement of a benzylic hydrogen with a bromine atom. This reaction is simply the radical halogenation reaction, which utilizes N-bromosacinamide as a source of bromine under conditions where we're going to heat the reaction. The solvent that's often used is a solvent that contains no hydrogens, so we don't have to worry about halogenation of the solvent, and that's carbon tetrachloride. So overall, this allows us to convert a carbon atom, which is not a good, new, a good electrophile, into a carbon that is a good electrophile. Let's look now at some additional sites of reactions, the substitution of peripheral substituents, not just the modification of substituents that we just learned about, but now their substitution with another group. We learned in the previous mini lecture how we can introduce the sulfonic acid group into a molecule. We can do that by taking the corresponding airing and replacing the hydrogen on that airing group with the sulfonic acid substituent. And we can do that using fuming sulfuric acid, and that's a mixture of sulfuric acid and SO3 gas. These conditions allow us to introduce the sulfonic acid group. As long as our ring has only alkyl substituents, or no substituents at all on the ring, we can replace the sulfonic acid group with an oxygen by heating the sulfonic acid with sodium hydroxide. This generates the O- on the Aryan ring. And since we've got an O- attached to the Aryan ring, this is the conjugate base of a molecule known as phenol, and we call it a phenolate. The phenolate can react with a source of acid and become protonated to give us the corresponding phenol. So overall, this is an excellent way to take a hydrogen on an airing ring and in a series of steps replace that hydrogen with an OH group. Now we've learned that the airing ring is very susceptible to reaction with electrophiles. Under certain circumstances, that airing ring can also be reactive towards nucleophiles. Remember back to Chem 311, we learned that the nucleophile is actually repelled by the pi bonds in the airing ring. And as that nucleophile it tries to attack the carbon atom from behind, it encounters steric strain as a result of the ring. It can't do a nucleophilic substitution directly by an SN2 mechanism because of the crowding within the center of the ring. In addition, the aerial halides can't undergo an SN1 reaction because the corresponding carbocation is highly unstable. So in order for these molecules to undergo, carbo undergo nucleophilic aromatic substitution, they actually have to take a completely different pathway than what we learned about previously, the SN1 and the SN2 reactions. And this overall reaction allows us to replace an X group, a leaving group, with a nucleophile. So let's look at the mechanism of this reaction. In the first step, our nucleophile attacks the carbon bearing our leaving group, X, which is one of the halogens. 
In turn, then, we push electrons to the adjacent carbon atom, leading to a negative charge within the airing ring. Through resonance, we can push this negative charge around to various carbons in the airing ring. And so the negative charge moves from the ortho to the para, and then back to the other ortho position. Now this intermediate could be stabilized if we had electron withdrawing groups on the ortho and para positions. Such electron withdrawing groups could stabilize these negative charges on the ortho and para positions and as a result lead to this intermediate, which is no longer aromatic, being quite stable. The subsequent step, step number two in the mechanism, involves the electrons coming back down and the X group, our leaving group, being kicked out. And in the process, our nucleophile is now bonded to our airing ring. So overall, this reaction works best when we have electron withdrawing groups on our ortho and para positions. Two of the best groups on the airing ring are the trifluoromethyl and the nitro substituents. If you remember, these are type 3 deactivating substituents, and they're quite electron withdrawing. They can stabilize the negative charge associated with that non-aromatic reaction intermediate. In addition to electron withdrawing groups being important, the nature of our leaving group is also important. The leaving group that leaves the best is actually the most electronegative atom, fluorine, followed by chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Notice that this is the opposite trend that we saw in the SN1 and SN2 reactions, where iodide was better than bromide, better than chloride, which was much better than fluoride. So in that non-aromatic intermediate, having a fluoro or chloro group allows that intermediate to decompose much more quickly, leading to the formation of the substitution product. Let's look now at a, a final important reaction in the substitution of arenes, and that is a species known as a diazonium salt. A diazonium salt has effectively a molecule of nitrogen attached to one of the arene carbon atoms. The end terminal nitrogen has a pair of electrons on it, and the nitrogen closest to the arene ring has a positive formal charge. This is an outstanding leaving group, because when it gets replaced by a nucleophile, we generate a molecule of nitrogen. If we look at the tables for the heats of formation of molecules, we find out that nitrogen is one of the very most stable molecules that you can make in a reaction. And as a result, this second step is highly exothermic. We're forming a molecule that is unusually stable in the form of nitrogen gas. Now the diazonium salts can be formed quite readily from an aniline. Notice in an aniline we have a lone pair on our nitrogen. It can serve as a very good nucleophile toward an electrophile. If we react sodium nitrite, which is Na plus, NO2 minus, with a source of acid, then we can generate an acid known as nitrous acid. And this nitrous acid is extremely reactive and extremely unstable. It will react quite readily with the nitrogen of aniline, leading to N nitroso anilines, which gradually lose a molecule of water from the two hydrogens of our nitrogen of aniline and the oxygen of our nitroso group to give us overall the diazonium salt. An X here could be chlorine, bromine, or iodine, or others. And our nucleophile can be a wide range of nucleophiles. 
So these diazonium salts form quite readily from anilines. And if you remember, through a series of steps, we can make the anilines from the corresponding nitro substituted airings. So this allows us to take a nitro group and replace it overall with a nucleophile. This is used quite frequently in synthesis problems. Let's look now at some of the nucleophiles that will react with the diazonium salt. H3PO2 is a reduced form of phosphoric acid. It's referred to as phosphorus acid. And it's a good source of a hydrogen with a pair of electrons. So overall, we can do a reduction of a diazonium salt to the corresponding air ring. And this doesn't seem like this would be a very productive reaction because in order to put the diazonium group onto the arian ring, we actually have to substitute a hydrogen with a nitro group, reduce it to the aniline, and then convert to the diazonium salt. But there are potential applications of this uh, reaction in organic synthesis. Replacement with an OH group can be accomplished by reacting the diazonium salt with acid and heating. This is a second way to make a phenol. We remember we learned that the sulfonate group, the sulfonic acid group, can be replaced with an OH group, uh, which is a reaction that only allows us to have alkyl groups on the arene ring. This reaction is much more tolerant of a variety of substitution substituents on our arene ring. We can replace the N2 group, the nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond, with a, with a carbon-nitrogen triple bond by reacting with a source of cyanide, potassium cyanide, and a source of copper, copper 1 plus, which is typically copper cyanide. So overall, we can convert the diazonium salt to a nitrile. Replacement of the diazonium group with an iodine can be accomplished using sodium iodide, which is sodium plus and I minus. Replacement with chloride can be accomplished using copper 1 chloride mixed with hydrochloric acid. And replacement with bromine can be accomplished using copper 1 bromide and HBr. So overall we have a number of very useful reactions here starting with the diazonium salt. Now one final reaction that's very useful from the standpoint of diazonium salts is their ability to couple with phenols or anilines. Our diazonium salt is actually an excellent electrophile as a result of the positive charge on nitrogen. And in fact, nucleophiles could react with the terminal nitrogen push electrons over to the second nitrogen, leading to a nitrogen-nitrogen double bond. And one good group of nucleophiles that will accomplish this are electron-rich phenols and anilines. We learned previously that the aniline group and the phenol group are good type 1 electron donors and orthopara directors on an arene ring. As a result of this ring being very electron rich, it can serve as a nucleophile at its ortho and para positions. And as a result of steric strain, the para position is more reactive in this molecule. So overall, we can substitute the hydrogen on our para position with our diazonium salt, leading to a highly colored molecule referred to as a diazo dye. So these are brightly colored and, and quite conjugated. The molecule shown here, in fact, is bright yellow. So for example, in this molecule where R is equal to hydrogen, we get a yellow coloring agent which used to be used to color margarine until it was determined that that yellow coloring agent was actually carcinogenic. They now use uh, uh, use or other natural sources of the yellow color to color margarine. A carotene, in fact, is used to color margarine instead of this molecule. If the R group is a sulfonic acid group, then we have our 
methyl orange indicator used in freshman chemistry, which shows a, a color change from yellow to red on titration with acid and base.